It's radical truth. It's radical truth. We are documentary filmmakers. That's a non-fiction film. It's a non-fiction film. It's the truth. So you tell the truth and you face the truth and you dedicate yourself to truth. Not to some comforting fantasy, but to truth because you want to know what's really happening. That's part of awakening. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another Vegan Nugget. Most people take great pains to avoid confronting the disturbing, horrifying, and heartbreaking reality of where our food comes from, preferring to take comfort in humane labels, shiny packages, and slick marketing. Then there are those few who run towards the truth with eyes open, forever changed by what they see while even fewer still somehow manage the impossible feat of finding hope amidst the horror. Writer and director Sean Monson is one of these fewest of the few. It was his willingness to witness horrors beyond comprehension and his desire to share the truth of humanity's treatment of non-human animals that culminated in the most iconic and impactful film on animal rights created to date, Earthlings. Dubbed the vegan maker, viewing Earthlings has become a defining moment of radical change in so many people's lives, leading to an instant enlightenment of sorts, with even the most dedicated meat, dairy, and egg eaters ransacking their kitchens and throwing out every animal product at the film's conclusion. Considering its profound impact, not to mention celebrity narration and soundtrack, it's shocking to learn that Earthlings almost never saw the light of day. I had the honor of meeting Sean when we were asked to speak at an all-day vigil with Toronto Pig Save, a grassroots activism group that bears witness to animals on their way to slaughter. This is a most vital and powerful action that every person should experience. The day after the vigil, Sean was kind enough to make time for an interview. He first shared about the struggles and roadblocks and initial failure of Earthlings. Well, I, uh, I finished it in uh, late 04 and the beginning of 05. I submitted it to 25 film festivals. It was rejected from all of them. So once you start getting your 6th, 7th, 8th, 10th, 15th rejection letter, you start thinking, um, is it the subject matter totally or is it maybe not a very good documentary film maybe it's not a very good film uh, people don't want to watch it so you know i remember chatting with joaquin and we just sort of scratching our heads going it's 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 good right we did this right you know and so we could understand it so it really um uh it broke me and uh and it took about two years and it started in brazil i remember it was in brazil for some reason someone sent a um a portuguese translation a subtitle for it saying when you make a disc will you please add this and which means they must have had a dvd and paused it and retyped every line he said in portuguese and at the same time we got one from france one from russia we got one in arabic we got one in hindi they began to come in oh. over in 2007 or 8 i began to see it sort of take off and i thought this is the same film it was in 2005 not a frame is different we didn't market anything and it gave me great hope for humanity that people would sit and look at this horror and begin to watch it, and they did. So it began to grow from there. Securing Joaquin Phoenix as the film's narrator was no small feat. Initially, Sean was told he wasn't available, so he pursued other narrators to no avail. Finally, with what he calls the confidence of ignorance, Sean reached out once more to Joaquin's publicist. Well, for, for Joaquin on Earth, Earthlings, he was my first choice, and this was in, I started it in 99, the film. And in 2000, uh, uh, he did a movie called Gladiator, which he was nominated for. It was a big, big, huge, big, huge film. And I loved his voice. And I had heard he had been a vegan his whole life. And I said, he's the narrator. It was a VHS tape because this was probably 2000, maybe, maybe early 2001 at this point. I sent a VHS tape and three days later I got a call and she said, uh, Joaquin will meet with you. I had a meeting with him where I think he was probably interviewing me more than me as a filmmaker, director interviewing him. I know that's what it was, and he said yes, we recorded the next day. We recorded four times after that. The second film in Sean's Earthling trilogy is a documentary called Unity, which features an unprecedented cast of a hundred celebrity narrators, a fourfold increase from his original plan of 25, which he felt was necessary to convey the scope of the message. But the beauty of these people, 
talking about non-duality, really, or the, the film's main theme, which is no separation, based on form. We teach love, and that's what really got to me, the fact that we teach love, the capacity for love, and in the same breath, aggression, aggression for these beings. And I thought, that's a separation based on form. And that's just like what racism was, or sexism, or any, or, or if your thoughts are different, you know, it's all this separation based on form. And then earthlings, were all earthlings. This is the spectrum of form. So, so not the same but equal became our, our sort of, you know, our sort of slogan, not the same but equal. Finally, I asked Sean what initially inspired him to create Earthlings and what it is that continues to drive him forwards. Just like the stuff we saw yesterday, you know, mm -hmm. I just... Yeah. I interviewed Mark Ching recently. He does the uh, dog meet and um, we're doing something with him. We're working together on something. He said something beautiful the other day. He said, you know, uh, there was a time when I was abused as a kid and I wanted someone to come in and save me. He said I was trapped. He didn't explain it where he was, but he was in a situation where he needed saving, a human who needed saving, when he was too weak, and no one came. So one thing that drives him is he wants to help save, and so like what we witnessed yesterday, we want to save them. Um, I don't get depressed by it, I see horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. A lot of activists get depressed. You filter it, you just filter it. You turn it into fuel, you don't get angry, you don't lose your mind. It's radical truth. It's radical truth. We are documentary filmmakers. That's a non-fiction film. It's non-fiction film. It's truth. So you tell the truth and you face the truth and you dedicate yourself to truth. Not to some comforting fantasy, but to truth because you want to know what's really happening. That's part of awakening. That's part of why people say, here's where my food's coming from. Here's where my clothes come from. Here's where, here's where the cleaning products of my home come from, my entertainment, what have you. And you don't shield yourself from it. You look at it. You face it. I find more power than that, than uh, negativity or weakness. And I'm encouraged by humanity that they would look at something as awful as earthlings. Buckets of blood, you know. Gives me great hope for people that are willing to turn and look at the truth. I never anticipated that. Joaquin and I talked about it. It just literally exceeded all of our expectations. And that speaks so well for people. It's beautiful. Feeling hope for humanity is hard enough, even when we're not confronting the darkest aspects of our culture. But here is this man who's witnessed the very worst we humans have to offer, yet remains optimistic. If nothing else, perhaps the fact that this man who films murder can find hope in our willingness to confront these atrocities is, in and of itself, a reason to have hope. To find out more about Sean's work and to see the powerful films Earthlings and Unity, please visit nationearth.com. You can connect with Sean on social media via the links in the description below, where you'll also find links to more information about Toronto Pig Save. My thanks to Sean for his time, his witness, his activism, and his monumental contribution to the animals of this world. If you found hope in Sean's message, give the video a like and share it around to help others make the connection. And subscribe to the channel for more vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and some Fridays. To help support Bite Size Vegan's educational efforts, please see the support links below or click on the Nugget Army icon or the link in the sidebar. Now go live vegan, run towards the truth, and I'll see you soon. All energy and there's just a ton of love on this corner pouring into those trucks. And that's the least we can do because there's not so much love over there. So that's one thing I saw today. <laughs>